Hello, my name is Austin Meyer, and I'm being sued for using the Google Play Store to distribute an app that I wrote. I'm being sued for patent infringement because someone claims to own the idea of the Google Play Store. That's how the patent system affects me. Today, we're going to talk about how the patent system affects you. So here's how the patent system works. You write down an idea that you have, and then you file that idea with the government. That's the patent. Then, if anybody actually does anything similar to what you wrote down, you sue them. That's the patent infringement lawsuit. So what ideas are owned by whom is controlled by the United States government in the form of the patent office? That's what the patent system is. So we know the government messes everything up. What happens when the government controls who owns what ideas? How far does the insanity go? Let's take an example. If I wrote down, for example, oh, I don't know, uh, the idea of a communication device capable of being used for voice communication, then the United States Patent Office would give me the patent for a telephone. Then, once I had that patent, I could sue Apple for making iPhones. All I say is, I own the patent on it. <laughs> Does this sound like some sort of a made up, hypothetical, ridiculous case? <laughs> well, it's real. That's an actual patent. A patent for a communication device capable of being used for voice communication. And yes, the person that holds that patent is suing Apple. And here's the lawsuit. Here's a couple of claims in this actual lawsuit going against Apple right now. Apple accused iPhones are capable of being used for voice communication. Apple's accused iPhones have two cameras. Apple's accused iPhones have a camera and display on the same side of the iPhone. Apple's accused iPhones have a camera located on the side of the iPhone that is opposite of the display. Apple's accused iPhone is capable of displaying its location on its display. Apple's accused iPhones are wireless communication devices. The 664 patent is presumed valid. <laughs> yes, it's all patented. That's an actual lawsuit that is being waged against Apple right now. Because Apple's iPhones can be used for voice communication or have cameras or show your location, the lawyers for a company called Cory Doris claim that Apple owes them money for infringing on their patent. Okay, if you're like me, you're thinking, a patent for a phone that you can talk on? I mean, maybe the guy that filed the patent was some sort of a pioneer of the cell phone industry? Maybe this patent was filed in the early 1900s or something and still stands today? Well, no. <laughs> Let's look at when the United States Patent Office approved this patent. August 17 of 2010. According to the United States government, a wireless communication device that could be used for voice communications was invented in August of 2010. Let's take a little glance at that patent. This is an actual screenshot from the actual patent. Dial. Connected. Send. Over. Disconnect. End. <laughs> yes, that is actually in the patent. The person that filed this patent seems to be the inventor of how to use a phone in the year 2010. <laughs> So the way the patent system actually works is you look at what someone else is doing, in this case, what Apple is doing in making iPhones, carefully write down what they're doing on a piece of paper, call it a patent, send it into the United States government, and then sue whoever you just copied. And of course, Apple's having to pay huge legal fees for all this because with this and countless other lawsuits, the defense cost is tremendous. So where do you think this money comes from? Well, obviously, it comes from me. And if you have an iPhone in your pocket, then it comes from you. Every time you pay huge prices for a new iPhone. Because remember, whenever you buy one of these things, you're not just paying for the phone. You're paying off the patent trolls, and you're paying off the lawyers to defend against the patent trolls. No wonder these phones are so expensive. Now, I can just see the YouTube comments in my mind right now. Ha ha ha! I have a Samsung Galaxy, not an Apple iPhone. A good thing I'm not affected by these lawsuits. <laughs> Go ahead, type your comments. I'll wait. <laughs> just ignore what's on the screen right now, okay? <laughs>
Yes, of course we're suing Samsung as well. Of course you pay for this too. <laughs> There's more patent trolling lawsuits than real patent lawsuits today. Of course multiple cell phone manufacturers are being sued for making phones. Someone got the patent for the phone in the year 2010. So the guy that filed this patent was some guy in Japan that I've never heard of. But the patents fall into the hands of a company called Cory Doris Technologies, LLC. But who is Cory Doris Technologies, LLC? Are they a cell phone maker or a cell phone inventor company or something like that? No, they're just a dummy corporation that files lawsuits while hiding the identity of the people behind it that are getting the money. <laughs> so we can't tell who actually is behind Cory Doris Technology collecting money because they claim to own the idea of the phone. But we can tell what lawyers are pressing the lawsuit. The lawyers' names are on every lawsuit that's filed. So what lawyers would ever file such a lawsuit? What lawyers would effectively sue all of us? <laughs> the answer is these lawyers. These lawyers all from Texas, as is so often the case. These are the lawyers that are saying that their client is owed money because he owns the idea of communication devices capable of being used for voice communication. <laughs> and the patent office was too incompetent to recognize the insanity of that statement. They're effectively suing all of us for using phones. I had to give them a call and ask why. This is Betty. Yeah, Elizabeth DeRue, please. It's me. Hey, um, this is Austin Meyer speaking. I am looking at a uh, lawsuit um, of uh, Corey Doris Technologies versus Apple, where uh -huh. apparently Corey Doris uh, claims to own the idea of a communications device capable of being used for voice communication. Am I understanding that right? Does Corey Doris own the patent for a communications device capable of being used for voice communication? I represent Cory Doris in uh -huh. that matter, uh -huh. and I'm I'm not sure. Like, are you connected with Cory Doris in some way? I just have not met you. I'm not no, sure I'm not connected with Cory Doris. No. Okay. So, does Cory Doris own the idea of using a uh, of device capable of being used for voice communication? Cory Doris owns the patent that's asserted in the litigation, yes. And does that patent claim to own uh, a device capable of being used for voice communication, as stated in your lawsuit, paragraph 16? I'm, I'm just not sure what you're asking me. I I'm asking Corey Doris, what I'm asking. Well, yeah, sure. I, I'd be happy to be more clear about my question, certainly. I'm asking if Cory Doris owns the idea of a device being used for voice communication. Because that's, what's, that's what you state in your lawsuit with your signature at the bottom. Uh -huh. And so I'm wondering if, if you actually believe that. I'm happy to call you back at a, at a time when I have a little more time to discuss this. So right now you're not able to tell me whether, whether this, this company owns... You know owns what? I mean, I don't even know who you are, and I'm not sure exactly what you're asking. If you're asking, if you're just reading the complaint, I don't have that I file am, in front of me. I right am now. reading the complaint. If you're just reading yes. the complaint, yes. the answer is that the matters asserted in the complaint are accurate to the best of my knowledge at this time. The language in the complaint is accurate. Polasek was in Barry and Arrington. Yes, uh, John Polasek, please. <clears throat> May I have your name? Sure, Austin Meyer. Please hold. Mm -hmm. Hi, Mr. Meyer. May I ask what this call is in regards to? Uh, yes, this is with regards to a uh, patent infringement suit between uh, Corey Doris and Apple Computer. Okay. Well, Mr. Polosik is not in. Would you like to leave a message for him? Hello? Yeah, Otis Carroll, please. Uh, this is he. Hi, this is Austin Meyer speaking. I'm looking at a uh, lawsuit filed against uh, Apple Computer, a patent infringement lawsuit, um, on behalf of a company called Corey Doris Technologies, LLC. And I notice in this lawsuit that you claim that uh, Corey Doris, LLC, owns the idea of a communication device 
that is capable of being used for voice communication, or at least so it would seem by my reading of the lawsuit. Am I misunderstanding something about that lawsuit? Uh, you know what? You may not be, but you're talking to the wrong guy. You need to call the patent lawyer who's involved in it. I, I need to call who? I'm sorry? Uh, you need to call. There's another lawyer listed, one of the patent lawyers. Give him a call. Uh, John Polisek? Yeah, give him a call. I'm just curious. Why is your name on the lawsuit if you're not the right person to talk to about said lawsuit? Well, you know what? I don't have any reason to talk to you right now. All right, this is where it gets crazy. <laughs> This is Marshall, Texas, where the lawsuit's being filed. I've been there, and the town is basically deserted. See that deserted building behind me right there? That's a satellite office of a law firm called McCool Smith. If you go inside of that building, all you'll see is empty rooms that are being used as fake addresses for dummy corporations to send out patent infringement lawsuits. There's no actual industry in there or anything else that I could find. The offices were all deserted. This building is nothing but a patent troll hive. What about the lead patent attorney in the lawsuit? He's from a place apparently called Bel Air, Texas. Maybe the computer industry is in Bel Air. So I googled images for Bel Air, Texas, and I found this. <laughs> this is what you see in Bel Air, Texas where the lawyer apparently lives that's listed as the top lawyer on the lawsuit. So, at the city being used as the venue of the lawsuit, I see an abandoned office building being used as a patent troll hive and controlled by a law firm called McCool Smith. For the town where the lawyer lives, I find an opulent neighborhood full of luxury McMansions. But again, no computer industry. I can't find any computer industry here at all. Just lawsuits. This is what happens when the government controls who owns what idea. The government's incompetence causes them to approve patents for the telephone in the year 2010. The lawyers set up dummy corporations inside abandoned office buildings to spew out the lawsuits while they live in their McMansions collecting the money. Apple pays out huge defense fees and sometimes jury verdict awards, which raises the price on the phones for all of us. If you want to see the full patent and the full lawsuit, go to thepatentscam.com. I have them set up for download there. As well, I'm making a full feature-length documentary called The Patent Scam that will be out this year. If you go to thepatentscam.com, you'll be able to get on the mailing list and find out how you can see it.